we should look after you. Look, 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 look. Yeah. I'm looking. Cool. I'm okay, Santa. Yeah. I'm on Ori. I can't. I can't. Look, 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 look. Yeah. Look, look. Look at Pilar. Look at Pilar. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. We kill. We Guys, guys. We kill all everyone. Now she's not up, but it's fine. Down to half HP. Adam at a third. Wonder coming in. Oh, Adam gets knocked up. Oh, Adam. Oh, the Baron's on Heretic's side. The stopwatch will buy him a second, but it's the only gold he's seeing this game. He's looking for silver at best. Heretics descend. Welcome back to the LEC. I'm here with the victorious Flakid. My first question is, that game kind of looked like it banged, did it? I mean, it really banged, yeah. I mean, lane in phase didn't bang. I think this matchup is like really not playable, <laughs> but I really wanted to play Serie today, and uh, I mean, I got away with it. All right, second question, semi-serious. How difficult is it to play Zeri with not necessarily a lot of point-and-click CC on you? I mean, I mean, it was really easy for me this game. I don't think I even used cleanse the entire game. It was like my, my team was doing like really good engages. And um, I mean, if we get like good Nico ulti, good um, like rel engage, like fights are really easy for me. But um, I mean, yeah, this game, this game really banged, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us like a very brief rundown of your ability pressing during the team fights? Did it look kind of like Q, 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 Q? Yeah, it was Q, 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 and then when Sejuani was around, she had the frozen heart, so it was like Q every two minutes, because this item is balanced. But yeah, it was mostly Q, 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 and like maybe one random me from time to time. Now, I want to ask you, because you do seem to like Zeri a lot, and the enchanters are not necessarily stepping in. We remember you, uh, Yumi with Zeri, we remember Lulu with Zeri, but right now you play a lot of engaged champions yeah. in the bot lane. What do you think has changed? Has it got anything to do with, like, you don't have a lot of engaged around the rest of the map, so somebody has to take the hit? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, support role right now is, like, mostly melees. I think you can play, like, some enchanter uh, matchups. Like, uh, I've seen in, like, LPL, LCK, some, like, Zeri, Lulu, uh, even like some disgusting Yumi <laughs> and like Lucian Nami still. But I mean, I think it really like depends on the team. But uh, yeah, overall, I think support role right now is like mostly like engage. Absolutely. Now, congrats, of course, on your win, Flakid. You almost won player of the game by 2%. Jankos yoinked it away from what? you. No way. So yeah, thank okay. you very much for the interview. Fantastic win from you. Ginny, over to you. Thank you so much, Gorgeous. No, I cannot believe it. 80 carries are just like left, hang out to dry. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the next game that we have coming up, and that is going to be Vitality up against Fnatic. We've already dissected this a little bit from the Vitality side, but I want to look at Fnatic, especially after their win yesterday, Aragon, mm. because that was such a great performance from the jungler once again. Yeah, I think, oh, well, to be fair, I think you could highlight almost every single lane on Fnatic yesterday, especially with the bot lane, with the top lane all having incredible individual performances, but especially a jungler. I think the way the whole team is sort of bought into playing with Razork at the moment, you see it all the time with priority lanes up top side, uh, stuff like the Karma, stuff like the Nico to go push and invade with Volibear. They've even done Renekton with Oscar Rinnan uh, to continuously invade and dive top side. I think that's really fantastic. and I love the direction they're going in. Yeah, to me as well, I think when you're looking at this matchup from a sort of top-down perspective, the jungle matchup for Vitaly is also one where I'm very worried for them, right? Because I feel like one of the bigger struggles that Vitaly have had so far has been Daglas, you know, in the early game specifically, he's had a fairly good weekend so far, uh, but into a Fnatic who have been so heavily kind of prioritizing getting Razork ahead or Razork has been forcing these leads early on, Vitaly who have struggled to get early information and that's led to Daglas having to cover a lot of lanes, it does kind of leave me a bit concerned around, you know, Vitaly's ability to contain Razork and then be able to play out the mid-game or the early to mid-game from there. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting dynamic because I do think this is Daglas's best games of the split recently. I think this split has actually been really good for him from the Jacks to the, the games yesterday. I think he's been absolutely having a pop-up performance and both teams, I think, could take this at the moment. I think I, Vitality a little bit more shaky. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you don't really know what you're going to get, and Fnatic are looking really good off of yesterday. So, you know, it's a bit up in the air. Yeah, Fnatic definitely having that momentum going in their favor as well. I mean, that rivalry against G2 is always going to be there, and we saw it in the pre-record earlier today how much they were really wanting that win over G2. Having that secured also puts them in a great perspective. But when we're looking from the side of Fnatic and their draft particularly, it feels like one champion that they really are just don't want to ban they don't want to pick it, and that is Smolder particularly. And we've we've seen Karzi on these carrying yeah. late game scaling AD carries. I do think that both teams are happy to let Smolder go through and try and counter it. Whether it's yeah. making bot lane volatile with a Kaiser Zeri or picking the TF into it, I think there are a lot of options for both teams. Yeah, I think that's the thing, right? Fnatic have basically ignored Smolder for a majority <laughs> of the split, whereas Vitaly have more or less been 
creating ideas around the Smolder, whether they have it or whether they're playing against it. Yeah. So on blue side, Vitaly R, I am very, very... I wouldn't be very surprised if they actually leave it up to maybe even 2-3 it because they are not going to expect Fnatic to lock it in on the 1-2 on the red side. Yeah, particularly yesterday as well with Photon during the interview mentioning that we have strategies in place for that Smolder. We have the TF that they're comfortable running. Uh -huh. Is that something we're looking forward to today? Potentially. I think it depends. Uh, they could early pick it and flex it, but I do think that was a specifically a smaller thing. Early on in the draft, they're already pinching out Humanoid with the Orianna and the Talia picks. Ari rises up in priority. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a B1 Ari. Yeah, Ari is definitely higher up in priority, but Fnatic have, you know, bit in the bullet being on red side. They're not even going to deal with Smolder potentially being in the game. So I do agree. I feel like for VTO, uh, the option is there if he wants an early Ari. There's obviously been a lot of uh, higher uh, AD carry prior when things like Smolder out of the uh, Paul, you do see Callista's coming, see Varus is coming, so I want to really know where Noah and the bottom lane of Fnatic go because they're one of the few teams lastly that didn't really lean on the Varus too much. Uh, they go towards the Ash, so there you go, a one-to-one answer, -one yeah. and of course Ash, Ash, Ash very flexible, and they yeah. could still do both as well in this rotation. Yeah, I think they could do Ash, Varus, and play for extreme lane domination, and that kind of makes a job of something like a Callista Renata incredibly hard because you're permanently outranged. You could, I think what you need to do now is draft some kind of hard engage and then play towards bot side because if you do draft Renata, you're just getting pushed in and that's not what Renata wants. You want to be pushing yeah. up continuously. You need something that can force. Rel, uh, maybe? Uh, re realistically, Rel, Lawless, those are the two that make the most sense. There's the Ari we were talking about for that first rotation. Yep. Uh, it should probably be the Lawless. I feel like if they allow their support pick to go to 4-5 and it gets pinched out, even if you secure uh, a jungle One, matchup two, or a jungler three, that you're happy to run this uh, Ari with, I feel like your bot lane then is going to suffer a little bit too heavily considering Fnatic have that R3. So there's the Nautilus, and now Fnatic, you would anticipate go towards the jungle roll for Resort here, something that's going to be able to play around the range advantage of the 2v2 on the bottom side, and then try and nullify whatever jungler that Douglas has in his back. I think you've got to pick away mid lane here. You're kind of already sort of pinched with Talia Ori bands. Maybe you go towards something like a Nico. Um, we've been seeing Annie around the world as well into the Ari pick. And that way you don't get pinched on the 4-5, but they're not going to do it. They're going to completely drop it and they're going to secure jungle with the volley bear. We've seen it a lot. Yeah, I do feel like, to me, Humanoid's the kind of player that should have a champion pool deep enough, even with the bands as yep. they are right now, Makes to sense. certainly survive another two bands. Uh, we'll see exactly what Vitaly want to prioritize. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Hui ban or something along those lines, right? Uh, but they are going to focus Vitaly for now on the Renekton and Jax. Uh, taken away from Douglas and Photon, Jarvan as well. They've got double uh, range support, very immobile, so don't want to have to deal with that hard engage. And yeah, Vitaly, I guess, will they go for another Oscar and Imban? I feel like they don't necessarily have to. I feel like they at the very least want to try and pinch away one of Humanoid's champions that maybe they're not willing to deal with, and it's the Twisted Fate. Yeah. So TF ban is reaction to the Jax ban, because that's a set of yes. ban for the Twisted Fate, that's so right. naturally going to ban that away. So do you blind pick uh, mid lane, or do you blind pick top lane? Probably mid lane, because you already see the mid pick. I, and I, I wonder... think... It has to be Annie or Nico. I wonder if, I mean, Nico is obviously a good choice. I wonder if they decide to lean on the Jace as a flex blind. I, it's not something I feel like I've seen Fnatic do at all, but at the same time, the, their options are dwindling a little bit. We could also still just see the Huey match into the Karma. Karma. So, yeah. And that still works technically as a flex too. So, so that was safe. my other option because what you really like to pair off uh, Volley Bear with is priority. And Karma gets priority into almost every single lane. So what you can do is just keep invading using that priority from the mid lane and keep sending Volley Bear into the jungle. And we've seen Razok play this extremely well. Now the uh, Renekton ban signals to me that they probably want something like the Aatrox as a blind pick for Photon here. He could also do his old uh, Jace, which is usually perma ban, but that's what that signals to me. Let's see. Cassante too? Cassante still up as well. There's a lot of safety in the top side yep. that you can match, potentially with dealing with a Karma or just as a blind. And it's where Vitaly go towards. It's just up to Daglas now. What jungler exactly he's got left up. I think Rel could be good here. Zin Zhao slipped through, actually. Could That's still lean on Zin Zhao. Uh, can definitely win out into Volley Bear if he's got the correct kind of setup. And he's got a Nautilus in the bottom side. 2v2 with Ari shouldn't be too painful. A lot of range damage on Fnatic. I think it probably makes the most sense out of everything that is still left up and available. Let's see. It's Viego. Okay. And I mean, this is also a very comfort pick for Daglas. We've seen him on it a lot of times. And now it also puts a lot of pressure on Fnatic to not give up first kill whilst they're already dealing with Engage from Nautilus because you've got the resets from the Ari and the resets from the Viego. Yeah, I think you had options in Rel Lee Viego because of the synergy with the Ari pick. These are very good pairings with the Ari. So they went for the Viego. This is a Daglas special. We've seen it a few times. And like you said, play off of the resets and a single target burst. And I think the name of the game here is to camp bot with this Callista. Not otherwise, they're just going to suffocate under the double ranged of the Varus Ash.
Yeah, I felt like the name of the game, bot lane, uh, we've seen that time and time again. From the side of Fnatic, yesterday particularly, we saw a great performance coming out from Razor. How are we expecting the jungle matchup to play out here, considering the fact that that's something we've highlighted coming into this? Yeah, so it's really important that uh, Fnatic play through the Volibear in terms of the invades as well as covers bot. So what's really important is that the bot lane needs to perma push and they need jungle cover. Otherwise, what can happen is they can just get hard engaged on with the, with Daglas and the Callista Nautilus. Volibear's really good at invading, and he's really good at using priority. So he has a lot of priority across the map here. I want to see what Razak can do with those invades. Yeah, and to me, very simply, Daglas has got to do something to try and cheat tempo to kind of break apart those plays. Because yeah. if he tries to match, then he's always going to not have first move from his laners because Fnatic, in theory and on paper, should have first move across the board. So Daglas potentially going to have to be doing a lot of catch up. If they can get out of the early game at e and even steading, then to me, as long as they can find some solid engage with that Nautilus, first kill, they should be able to win out some T-fights in the mid game pretty comfortably. Yeah, it seems like a setup pretty much for both of these laners. I also want to quickly touch upon the mid lane, particularly with that synergy between the mid laners and the junglers. We've seen how that could be a great emphasis on that bot lane in terms of getting some dives early on. Are we expecting that for either one of these compositions? Yeah, I'd say the Karma with first move alongside that Volibear could move mid through mid and to bot side very easily if they, if they decide to play through that. Yeah, definitely that's an option, especially since the double range bot lane will poke out the other bot. All right, and with that, we're ready to head into the second game of today. Vitality up against Fnatic. Both of them 4 0, but who's going to lose that lead? Let's find out with our casters. Thank you very much, Ginny. You have taken a loss away from both Fnatic and from Vitality. Both of them are sitting at 4 and 1 right now. One of them will be joining Heretics at 4 and 2. One of them will be leading the pack 5 and 1. And Fnatic obviously beating G2 yesterday. A very strong performance by them, very clean. Vitality surprising a lot of people being at the top of the standings. And as we get on into the game box, I want you to talk me through a little bit about what's going through the team's mind as they go for an invade like this. Well, I think this is something we're generally going to be seeing more nowadays with the pre-recorded drafts and teams having opportunities to really identify how they can get an early advantage. I think here, going for the early invade, potentially placing a couple of wards to make sure that your Varus and your Ash are safe to pressure, but is really the key part because, as the analyst identified, that is the main focus for Fnatic. Varus and Ash are going to have a lot of pressure in the 2v2. Volibear can naturally have top to bot or even split the map as they're doing here to try to secure the advantage. But you can dun, see dun, a very dun. sneaky vehicle in the enemy jungle. Lisan Al-Kaib. Daglas just snuck through, round through the bot lane, knew that his, top, uh, his jungle was going to get stolen away. And because of this boxer, it snowballs. Because if we see Razork go down towards bot at level three after clearing this side of the jungle, Daglas can match it. And they talked a lot about the on the analyst desk about how Daglas has to kind of navigate the early game with Razork being slightly stronger, obviously having double AD carries in the bot lane. Do you think this strategy from Daglas can pay off if he matches an early gank bot? I think it definitely can. Now, it is worth noting that Oscarina actually invaded the enemy top side, putting a ward so they know that Daklas, at the very least, is not starting on this blue buff. But at the ooh. same time, ooh, that's a lot of trading going down on Kazi trying to trade in here. There's the ignite, but Kazi gets first blood, and Jun can't no get him age. He oh. flashes. He gets it. Will Hillasang chase? Of course he will. It's Hilly. He loves a little bit of a barn. He loves a little bit of a battle, but now he's forced away. The slow from the Ash Order, but it's Daklas. <laughs> it's genius vitality are playing 16D chess while the rest of us are googling what on earth is on passant. Hillisang chasing forward as Razor's gonna get forced away from these Krugs, Hilly flashes the wall and Daglas follows suit. They get the slow. Razork still has a flash of his own. Daglas needs to CC him more. He can't get in range. Can BTO. BTO get across from the side? Has the flash only level two. And in the end, Razork gets the hell out of dodge. I love the creativity from Daglas just sneaking into the enemy jungle and catching them off guard. Worth noting that even if Fnatic hadn't gone for that super aggressive fight, they're playing red side bot lane. So he could just have finished it, the clear, come right behind them, and he would have an almost 100% sure chance of getting a kill, no matter the circumstances. Now, of course, there's a lot of summoners burnt in the bot lane at this point. The only one available is Noah's Flash. And both junglers, naturally, will go topside, path down. But, man, this fight was crazy. It really was. The hook going down, the exhaust immediately on Noah. And this is where Callista can be really strong in the early game, especially Hillisang with the extra CC from his auto attacks. Kazi just rips the spears out. In the end, not a huge amount to break down mechanically, like an exhaust and a heal were used, but it's purely those spears doing so much work for Kazi. Oh, and there he is. Sneaky, sneaky vehicle. Now. <laughs> <laughs> 
as we finish the celebrations, getting back to the game in a moment, I wouldn't be surprised to seeing the junglers making their way towards bot side. And that's exactly what Razak does. Shifting down immediately. Danklas in the meantime sitting top, covering his top laner because they know that if Razak was up here, Photon would be very easy to kill with Olaf and Volibear just running him down. Looks like the Razork is going to get double crab out of this. Oscar winning going in. Ghost has been popped. There's the knock back and Daglas once again in the right position at the right time. In winter, he was underperforming massively, but over these last couple of weeks, Daglas is really stepping up. Top laners, man. Like, they just can't resist fighting, can they? <laughs> <laughs> they have one opportunity for Daglas to get a kill, but the read is perfect. He's there on point. Oscar, obviously completely CC chains and has no opportunity to flash out. Now, Dragon is up in 30 seconds, Daklas moving out to bot side immediately, Razor most likely gonna follow, and then we'll see whether well, the bot lanes not having many flashes available is gonna have a huge influence in this upcoming fight. Now, bot wave is pushing out towards Fnatic. If you're Vitality, you want to make sure that Kazi and Huli are safe and that they're not gonna be run down by Volibear in a moment, and of course if you're Razor, you want to be able to hold that freeze. Like, the longer Fnatic can hold this, the more pressure there's going to be on the Vitalis bot lane. Humanoid is pushing out mid already and will be able to base and TP back soon. Razzlecon on his way. He's going to land the stun on Hillisang, but once again, Daglas there to match. Hillisang will be the first to fall, though. Daglas trying to get the resets off. Kazi going in. Razzlecon escaping on a sliver. Spectral Moor finds the stun on Noah. Kazi puts the spears in again. And the last one is enough. Vitality cracking open the bot lane through the power of Daglas. I think this was greed from Fnatic more than anything. Like, Humanoid was pushing out the wave, he was about to base. If they had done the same in just 10 seconds, which they could easily have by just holding the freeze, Humanoid would have been there with an item advantage, but we see it right here. You know, Huli obviously goes aggressive, kind of baits out the fight from Fnatic, and sure, it was very close, but as Fnatic, that's not an opportunity you want to give the enemy team. Noah just overstepping a little bit right at the last moment. That final spear from Kazi enough to take him down. 4 to 2 now the score for Vitality. An incredibly explosive early game. I like it a lot more than our game one where it took 12 minutes for us to get first blood. The dragon's still an option for both these junglers, but they're now on the top side of the map looking for those clears. Daglas spotted on a ward. Grubs a, an option. Looks like Photon and Daglas are going to start it up. Yeah, and Fnatic knows that they are on, um, you know, on the Void Crops. Vitio is still moving down, trying to catch them off guard. Hawkshot comes in a little bit late and they might get something here. The charm going down, but it's a mixed focus here. No other first target. Jun could have been targeted down as well. His Sang's still able to survive. And I think it's kind of what you said. They, they knew that Daglas was on the top side of the map. So the Fnatic bot lane was like, okay, you know, we're a little bit safer. We know the enemy jungler is not going to be around, but Vitio with a really solid move from mid means that Vitality get their fifth on the board. A 1,200 gold lead right now. Rasok should be able to get this dragon, especially with Humanoid having pushed out mid. Vitio takes the long way around back to mid. And you can't even blame Noah and Jun for thinking they're safe, because it is pretty rare in Pro League that there's two plays being made at the same time. But good read, uh, good read from Vitality. They knew that nobody could beat as a counter gank. He quickly made the play as Razork was moving out of base. And just an easy advantage, really. Now they're up almost 1.5k gold. Razork secures the dragon, of course. But if you're Vitality here, you can start playing really fast around bot lane. And the Callista Nautilus can make such a huge difference. Now, anytime they go forward, and look at the wave too. Like, anytime they go forward, very easy opportunity to get a kill on Noah and Jun. If you're Vitality, you have to make sure this free stays. Fnatic will naturally be walking far up, and that's your opportunity to engage in them. Okay, so if you're Fnatic, how do you stop the freeze from happening in this position? You can see Razzle coming across. Humanoid was kind of hovering a little bit as well. Do you just need more numbers to make sure you can overwhelm this Vitality bot lane? Well, I would expect to see both mid laners here playing very aggressive and trying to get the prior. You even saw Oscar shifting down, giving Humanoid a bit of confidence and comfort to, to push the wave more aggressively. And Humanoid just has to shift down while Vitio is catching the, on the turret. You see it right here, Vitality has to back off. They're worried about, you know, going aggressive while being outnumbered. Humanoid was very smart. He just moved into Fog of War and essentially gets a free base while helping his bot lane push out. It's the idea of the overloaded side of the map, right? If you don't know where the enemy mid is, he could always be bot lane and then you're playing a 4v3 
if so both the junglers join in. Something we haven't mentioned, but we have noticed, is the double exhaust from Kazi and Hillasang. Works really well into double AD carry. Ignite doesn't really do too much, especially if you're looking for Jun, because he just pops the barrier, and Noah can also use the heal preemptively. So having double exhaust, stopping those hail of blades from really ripping through you, just helps you out so much. And it's helped Vitality out really well so far. You know, Kazi has 700 gold ahead. He has three kills. And Vitality, if they can continue playing through him, can really set up this mid game. If you were uh, Vitality right now, if you were Daglas, how would you try and facilitate this bot lane to really accelerate the game away from Fnatic? Well, they're generally in a really good spot where, you know, top lane is supposed to be a very difficult matchup for Photon, but because of the kill he got earlier, he's just chilling and farming, even trading back uh, while being counterpicked, as we can see right here. Daglas has great items and is ahead of Volibear. The only real place for Fnatic to contest is mid lane, but outside of that, they're going to be under a lot of threats. Daglas just needs to slowly path towards bot, try to get some vision in the river, and then you can get the bot push out for free, have Huli and potentially Kazi move up for the Void Grubs that are spawning in a minute, get the Void Grubs, and then shift your attention to Dragon. That makes sense. The one good thing Fnatic have done is not lose any plates, although they have been losing their lives. Still five plates on either tower in this bot lane. Kazi does have the Fates Core now, so there's always the option if Noah oversteps to yeet Killersang into the middle of the fray, which is the place he enjoys being the most, it seems. Instead, there's the reset, and just as you talked about, Broxer, they reset, having pushed out bot, now they're going up towards the top side to play around these grubs, already three for Vitality. You can see the reset from uh, Daglas at the same time. We talk often about tempo, making sure that you reset at the same time as your jungle, and you're all coming back out onto the map together is a perfect example of that here from Vitality. Yeah, and they really are two options. One is to utilize Daglas to push out the cannon wave, force the enemy to respond and then come out on the map or you can just base immediately have everyone rotate up photon coming bot and then still having the tv available to join uh, a potential 5v5 of course and now you see noah like he's so slow they just get the push out absolutely for free and they can start void groups whenever they want to worth noting that video isn't based right now he doesn't have tp up uh, yet i believe yep you're right and uh, that means the mid prior is Fnatic's, and they have a quick window to force a fight. The problem is, it's such a small window because Oscar doesn't have TP, and he's matching bot wave. So if you did force Humanoid into this fight, even though VTO doesn't have his teleport, Photon could always TP in, and at best it would be a 4v4, if not a 4v5 when VTO eventually joins the battle. So all the grubs going over to Vitality can be very powerful on them if they can get those auto attacks down on the towers. I'm sure Fnatic would have loved them. Double AD carry and even an Olaf with uh, six void grubs. Very powerful in the push, but this entire early game has been about Vitality. 50 seconds before the next Drake, we'll see if Vitality look for that top push into reset that you talked about, Broxer. And I think for Fnatic more than anything, it's just about stopping the bleeding right now, making sure that you don't fall further behind than this 2k gold. You are okay with giving up the dragon if you have to. You know that you're still waiting for your power spikes. There's not a single core item completed quite yet. And once you get to like one, two core items, it's way easier for you to set up some big fights and actually create, uh, you know, an advances for yourself. Interesting lane assignments as well. Humanoid as the player to come up top of his reset. He's been matched with Jun. Kazi and Hillasan continue to push in top. Pings come down around the Drake. It looks like is gonna go across, put a little bit of vision down, so if Razzle tried to solo the Drake, at least they would have awareness of it. Kazi and Hillasan still staying in that top push. Humanoid. Don't walk off. How are your Don't walk off. senses? He walks no. straight up. Depth charge. Pops down the Mantra Dinner Flame and manages to heal himself up a little bit. The arrow down. Doesn't quite connect, Humanoid has to burn the flash to get away. I was just about to compliment Fnatic from such a smart swap, putting Humanoid top, being able to catch safely on the turret, having TP advantage, so Fnatic would be able to get the Dragon essentially for free. The but dive continues though, Exhaust down on the Jun, Kazi's so low. Humanoid has a bunch of spears in him, but it's not enough, and the inner flame connects. Vitality, it wouldn't be them without a little bit of too much greed. Humanoid gets a double. As Photon was trading with Oscar down towards the bottom side, Flash Spectral more is it enough with the Heartbreaker? Daglas takes it. Noah and Razzle on the chase, though. Chain of Corruption, a possibility here as Photon takes a little bit of a chip. Daglas and Photon, how do you escape such precarious situations? RTP. Heartbreaker away. There's the stun chain of Corruption shut down to Razzle. Charm goes wide from VTO. And that's all for all. A good trade for Fnatic.
I'm standing here trying to analyze what's happening, and while my brain is working, people are just like, I see a champion, let's fight, let's go in and hope for the best. It is so crazy what these teams are doing right now, but luckily for Fnatic, before they were down 2k, Vitality lost their minds a little bit, and now the game is back, so even with Fnatic also having two dragons, and we see the Void Grubs, the Dragon trade, which at this point Fnatic is very happy about because while the Void Grubs can be pretty useful, you would take two Dragons over it any day of the week. Oh, 100%, especially since Vitality are the longest range composition as the arrow goes on to Hilly. He's just short of the dredge line. Kazi, the first target. Hilly able to escape with a Fates Call, pulled into the dead body of his AD carry. Razzle trying to trade back in as VTO dashes forward with the Spear Rush. Daglas now. Three and one as he takes another and a knock back onto Humanoid, trying to get the damage down, but the shutdown for Hillisang. That just possesses another soul. Knocks the focus resolve out two for one in exchange for Vitality. And right there, we saw the problem was Volibear. <laughs> Once you go in, there's no real way of coming back <laughs> out, especially against the comp like Vitality that has so much CC. And right now, knowing two people are dead, Humanoid obviously has TP, but still is dead for another 10 seconds. They can get the Rift Hill for free look to push out lanes, get recess if they wish, and then try to set up for a big and beautiful Herald play soon. And try and crack through that mid-tier one. It opens up so much of the map for you if you can break through it. Daglas again on a carry, having a performance, an unenviably good performance here. 3-1 and 3 on the Viego. We'll have another look at this fight in the mid lane, because initially it's Hellasang who's caught out. Yeah, we see it right here. Catching Kuli, Kasi tries to help out. And the mistake Razog made there was holding forward. If he had just kept the Volibear ult, used it to get disengaged, that's a chance his team could have helped him. But he all of a sudden had no escape tool, and it's so simple and easy for Vitality to just hunt him down. Humanoid tries to help his teammate, didn't recognize that he was already dead, and gives another bonus kill. And now, it's, uh, the Daglas and Kazi show for Vitality. Fnatic still have. There are a couple of kills on Humanoid, a couple of kills on Razok. Jun getting a couple of kills is very beneficial for them as well. Does pump up quite a lot of damage in the early game on the Ash. It's two and a half minutes before the next Dragon. About a 700 gold lead or so for Vitality. Game relatively even, but you, you, you do feel Vitality will need to look to set up around this next Dragon, don't you, Boxer? Yeah, definitely. It's also a pretty difficult situation for Fnatic to be in right now. Mostly if you look at top lane, you can see that Olaf really is only sitting on a Ravenous Hydro, and eventually when he has two free items, he's going to be very tanky, especially with so much life still. But right now, when he runs his Vitality, they can just target him and burst him immediately. So if I was them, I would set my sights on this dragon. Come out of base now in a moment. There's two minutes to spawn, so you have plenty of time to get your push out and secure the advantage for yourself. Once the vision is placed and Fnatic comes into face check, it's really, really easy for them to get a pick on literally anybody because you have Nautilus, you have Callista, uh, Ult Ascendant Nautilus even deeper, you have Ahri Charm, so many engaged tools. And you have the Rift Hold as well to make the push through mid happen. We'll see with the reset coming out from Hillisang and Daglas. Hillisang does have four wards on his Celestial Opposition. How many? Uh, a slew of wards down towards a VTO who's pushing in bot. Looks like Vitality will invest in getting mid prior and then moving Nautilus and Callista into this bottom side river. Oscar Winning should be able to take this tower. Even though Razzle was spotted on the ward, he did his job. Walked up here, made Photon a little bit scared. Photon backs away, the tower goes down. There's the Rift Hell put out by Vitality. BTO will ride Shelly to its inevitable end. As this tower will fall. You get more mites spawning out of Shelly the more grubs you have. So because you have six, very powerful. Here we go. Oh, a bit of Tokyo drifting. <laughs> Just following the GPS, you know, it's led him into a river, but thankfully he's been able to survive as the hook goes down. Rift Held will get a knock up here as well Whoa. as they chase forward. I love it, the battle, Shelly. Ride it into battle like a stallion. Doesn't really do as much as I was hoping for. That line was much better than that play. <laughs> that was a bit anti climatic. <laughs> But still, it, it does mean Vitality can set up around the Dragon, like you said, Boxer. Yeah, and I like the decisiveness we're seeing from Darkless this game. He's playing aggressive, he's playing confident, and, you know, he's up against arguably the best jungler in the league right now, and he's really putting him in his place with this 700 gold advantage, being part of most kills in the river early to gain control for his team. And Jun, whew. He just pulled out with the all-out heartbreak, a good follow-up here. There's the shutdown, Darkless gonna possess the Ash now. Noah exhausted, Kazi low, VTO takes the kill exchange. By Noah, now down towards the bottom side of the fight. VTO's gonna spear rush forward, Photon, very low, Ragnarok comes out, and Ragnarok rolling through! 
Vitality is Oscar in it. Douglas Force down, Razzle flashes forward, Oscar gets two. And in a fight that looked great for Vitality, Fnatic come out on top. And we saw the power of Olaf into Vitality's comp in this particular case. Once the Olaf gets rolling and you have Humanoid next to him shielding, slowing the opponents, it's so hard to stop the Viking from just taking over. And now, with that play, Fnatic even getting the third dragon for themselves. But Shun, like, what are you doing there, my boy? Like, oh, oh wow. no, 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 no. We see it right here, like, the Heartbreaker and misses because of the all out as well, sorry. This is actually legal. Like, Noah and Jun <laughs> are playing like, they are the Cassandra, they are playing on. I don't even know. Like, they are so, so over aggressive. But despite that, this topside trio from Fnatic find a great opening, partly due to Vitality going so deep for these two plays. And, you know, the Olaf just works so nicely for them. Especially if you can have Karma healthy behind them as well, just pumping out the shields, pumping out the slows with those inner flames. Game basically even 19 minutes in, we're having a killer minute. Hillisang looking for the hook. Jun has flash. Noah burns his. And Chano Kusar goes wide as the chain of corruption does land. Hillisang with a focus in a flame on him. Means that he's going to have to be pulled back with a fate's call, but Razorok is ripping. Razorok, <laughs> Razorok in fact, is ripping through Daglas. And had it get another kill. Baron up in 13 seconds' time. Might just be playing around vision here, but they could look for the big purple worm. It is pretty early in the game. They're going to start it directly at 20 minutes, and the big purple worm does deal a lot of damage nowadays, meaning that while Vitalis' jungler is dead, Fnatic will take a decent amount of damage from tanking it, and they could consider to contest. Looks like they won't, at least they're hesitating. And by the time they actually and make up their you. minds, it might be a little bit too late to respond. Down to a thousand, as you say. Fnatic get it, and now Vitality on the retreat. Let's like forced away. Photon pops the path maker, but he can't find a way to go. Noah now gets another kill to his name. Vito has to pop the spirit rush to get out. And the gold is just balloon. Fnatic. After being 2k down in the early game, now 3,000 in the in, in the lead. I want to cry. Why did he walk up? <laughs> like, you have to make up your mind. You could just see it for 30 seconds. They're just standing there being unsure whether to walk in or not. If you give up the Baron, if you don't want to risk it, that's fine. But at least then, push out mid, push out top. Start sending somebody bot so you can push out everywhere. Get control in the river. Set up some pink, set up some vision so that now when Fnatic come back out on the map with the Baron, you can actually look for picks, especially you know, since the entire Fnatic lineup have no flashes, there could be so many opportunities. They didn't. Fnatic get Baron buff. They're going to get full control for free. And looks like it's a great time to be a Fnatic fan. It really is. Three minutes before the Cloud Soul as well for them. Kazi has double recurve, trying to get towards that Terminus. But Vitality's jungle littered with wards. Oscar in enforced away here. Hook going in from here. Sang. There's the depth charge as well. Ragnarok available for Oscar in, and I believe hasn't popped it yet. And the shutdown over to Daglas. Big gold in the pockets of the Viego has a Sundered Sky Kraken Slayer combination. Now, back in my days when I was on Fnatic, we had a, a great play. We called it the Huni Int, actually, another okay, form yeah. of Fnatic player. The idea is you play really, really aggressive on the side lane as the top laner. When the enemy team comes to kill you, you get a lot more on the other side. And if that was Oscar's intention, I mean, he's like, guys, I'm going to run it down like Huni did back in the day. And they get, you know, but through it, they get mid through it. I could respect it, but he was just a little bit too early and got caught for absolutely no reason. Daglas just gets caught in the mid lane, was hit with an enchanted crystal arrow into the chain of corruption. Hillisang looking for more, but Humanoid's on the flank now. TP coming in by Vitality. Kazi trying to dodge his way around the fight. Humanoid should be able to take him out, but can't hit the inner flame. The charm though connects. And Fnatic once again, we're looking for the fight. I think the Huni Int is a whole team in here by Fnatic as they went for the fight and lost out heavily. What am I even looking at at this point? Holo, 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 holy First shit, is Vitality, Fnatic. then it's Oscar, <laughs> then it's the rest of Fnatic. What, what's next? Like, Vitality going to walk under the enemy Nexus and all die for no apparent reason. Well, <laughs> the game is almost even again. Welcome Vitality is in a great spot. Great I did say they should try to get some picks. They should try to look for some opportunities. I wasn't expecting it to happen in this way, but Fnatic, they kind of lost their minds. I mean, you could see what they were thinking. Daglas got hit with the arrow into the chain of corruption. He's like, okay, he's CC for a year and a half, but Kazi's just able to dodge but away Olaf from everything. Dead. Look at Olaf, he's in base. You're forcing a fight. <laughs> Four versus five. Look, Box, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find the bright side, okay? Why are you not They're trying to win the game? Cave. They've been feeling just fine. <sighs> Gotta take it all, Boxer. It's exhausting being a customer. It really is, isn't it?
Good fun, though. Well, <laughs> we, have, we have a laugh, True. because otherwise we'd have a cry as we think about MSI. 14 to 13, 23 minutes in, a thousand gold between the two teams. A Drake on the horizon, 30 seconds away, an arrow going to someone's kitchen there, through a window. Charge the repair bill to uh, Jun at Fnatic HQ. Photon's pushing in top. The answer from Fnatic is in overloaded mid lane. And looking for VTO. Dragon up in 19 seconds though, Brox. And it looks like Fnatic have first move on it. They seem to have a good setup. Yeah, and they're gonna have to start this dragon immediately when it spawns. Photon pushing top with six void growth means he's gonna get this turret real quick and then has plenty of time still to actually teleport down. And not generally the greatest play from Fnatic. This is not the kind of position you want to be in. But when you're all up and when you've lost control of the game, having no TP on your top laner, you just have to force fights one way or the other. And as you can see, they force the objective immediately. Vitalis, you might even decide to just give it up because, well, you know, it's just the Cloud Soul. Who cares? Vitio keeps getting caught in the exact same position. Not really learning from his mistakes, but hey, at least he has ult up again because at this point in the game, our ult yeah, basically like doesn't have a cooldown. I, I will say, like, it's a couple of times we've seen teams just say, I mean, it's both times it's been Vitality, obviously not want to play for an objective and then just go for it anyway. Like, VTO just steps too far forward. The arrow, great. Pathmaker from Photon. He's now locked up. Like, why is Daglas it? Do you think you can trade into four people, Daglas? He was just covering, but Photon takes the kill. So it's Cloud Soul for Fnatic in exchange for a tier two and half of a top lane inhibitor tower from Photon. I'm just standing yeah. here trying to figure out why he actually decided to die there. Like, if you want to die, ideally you at least take the tier three turret. He also has plenty of time to TP out. But at the end of the day, you know, at least he's going to spawn in time for Baron. You could argue that he was just trying to get a quick recall, but unfortunately at this point in the game, the death timers are, are pretty long. Now both teams are coming back out on the map. Goal is going to be to set up control around the Baron area. Humanoid is pushing out bot deep. Eventually, Vitalis is going to have to send somebody down there to respond. And when they do, Fnatic can shift up naturally, get control of the top river and Baron, and then they can force another great objective fight. Fnatic fans in loud voice, attack on one. We'll see if uh, Fnatic are able to attack one tower in this bottom lane. They should be able to take it. It's VTO splitting in the top lane. As the tower does fall, Vitality giving up the ghost of that one. Baron up in 18 seconds. Vitality have the vision control. No wards there from Fnatic right now. One Sentinel. Spotting out a little bit of this. No real vision from Fnatic, uh, from Vitality deeper into this jungle. They'll want to move Hilly in here to try and get some of those deeper wards if they're going to contest around this Baron. Instead, Hilly goes towards topside to make sure that Photon is safe in pushing out of this bottom lane. It is interesting to see how the two teams are deciding to play around objectives, because Vitality have been investing a lot of effort into letting Photon just split push. And it seems like Fnatic are willing to just take the fight on even terms. Yeah, but I feel like Fnatic just generally is one step ahead. They're always getting something, and especially having this Cloud Soul at this point with Olaf and Volibear just running down the position, puts them in a very good situation. Now, forcing Baron immediately. This time, Vitality has to respond. There's no way you're going to give up oh, Baron. Just gone. Like, what? How did this sequence happen? Hilly went warded for Photon. Vitality had first move in mid. Didn't get any deep wards in, and Fnatic just walked into the Baron pit and took it away. What? I, I, you, uh. you played in games where this has happened. I remember uh, World's Finals 2018. Really? I remember Athens 2019 as Hilly dies. I remember these plays where you just seem to get outplayed on the map. What? What is going through your mind as a as a losing team in that sort of situation? Well, that's the thing, right? I feel like Fnatic hasn't even done anything crazy or extraordinary. It's like Baron spawns. Of course, Fnatic is naturally going to move there as a self-control. Dragon spawns, they're going to move there as a self-control. And, you know, at least when they gave up the Dragon, Vitality got a lot on the top side. But then, from that point on, Fnatic have just gotten so much for free, and Vitality just don't seem very prepared. Another great example of it. Discount day in the top lane as Photon's just caught out. He was trading with Humanoid for days, but Oscar just walks across. Vitality, a man down as Hilly obviously was dead. They're trying to defend this mid lane. It's 3v3 now. No one has the chain of corruption in charge of Crystal Arrow. But Fnatic are just, uh, just playing the map better. Kazi caught with the arrow as he dashes into it. The Marshall boys still had the flash, didn't have time to dash out. Noah's going to get taken out by Daglas, but already VTO's fallen as well. And the Wolves descend, Fnatic descend. 
and down to send Vitality into their graves. Fnatic get the ace. Four members left alive. This might just be game. The crazy part is that with these two comps, Fnatic are naturally going to outscale Vitality. And if the game is near even at this point, they're just going to beat them and destroy them. But Vitality freely let them get everything, freely let them get to this point. And because Fnatic just kept getting picks over and over and over, Vitality just lose the game without even getting a single team fight. Yeah, just crazy. Fnatic, incredible performance by them, but disappointment, I think we can say, from Vitality in that mid-game. Fnatic now top of the table, 5-1 and one. Vitality. Just a little bit further behind, joined with Heretics at 4 and 2. Still very much, you know, they're pretty much guaranteed playoffs, very much likely to go there. Looking forward to seeing how they continue to develop. But this game was a microcosm of mistakes from Vitality. Yeah, they were in a great position. Photon had a very big lead in Kassande. Daklas was in an amazing position, but they were just so afraid of doing absolutely anything. And the aggressive Fnatic just destroyed them. Punished them really well. You can vote for one of them in your key player of the game at LEC on X. Razork, Humanoid or Jun. Are your options. The arrows were great, Razzle was good, Humanoid was karma. Anyway, we'll be right back after this, don't go anywhere. Really using Katarina's cook. <laughs> Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cup cake. Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cup cake. <laughs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. Care freely using. <sighs> Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cup cake. Oh, it doesn't even matter. I I'm ready. It's fine. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Oh! <laughs> oh, Dios mío de mi vida. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. 